Hi everyone, my name is Kfir Pravda, the CEO of Pravda Media Group, a B2B digital marketing company here in Israel. I'm also the host of B2B Talks, a community of B2B marketers selling technology products worldwide. In January 4th, we had a B2B Talks panel in a nice bar here in Tel Aviv uh, with some of the brightest minds in the world of marketing today. Um, we try to tackle a topic uh, that is one of the biggest challenges for marketers, especially B2B marketers today. And it's the fact that the world of marketing changed tremendously. 60% of the buyer journey today is happening without even talking with the vendor or the seller. 77% um, of marketers in a recent uh, study by Gartner claimed that uh, the world of marketing changed in the last two years more than it changed in the last 50 years. The reason for that is because marketing from a more campaign-based uh, approach is moving toward a continuous engagement uh, approach that is led by the um, changes in marketing technologies and changes in buyers' behavior. So we've asked three, uh, three marketers working for relatively large companies uh, to share their knowledge, their experience, and their challenges in facing this, uh, uh, this transformation. One is Efrat Fenningsen, who is a senior director uh, of marketing communication in Via Access Oka. Uh, the other one is Guy Hilton, who is head of portfolio marketing uh, at Amdocs. And the third one is Ifat Moore, director of marketing at Click Software. Each and every one of them shared their, uh, their biggest challenges and how they managed to talk with their management, uh, employees, and also change the way they work in order to uh, get themselves accustomed to the new way of marketing. Hope you enjoy and see you soon. We see that more and more CEOs are looking at marketers and marketing in general not as a cost center. They are actually, get out to this, expect them to bring in business results. Right? They want them to bring leads. And that's not a simple transition. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, the personal experience of people here on stage uh, from their current job or past job. The more important thing is less what they work today, but more of what they've seen. Because we have a very uh, um, uh, wide, many different types of experiences here. Uh, and that's why it's very, very important that you will jump in with your questions, with your uh, needs. Uh, and get these answers because it's really hard to get those guys. I mean, I had to pay for a beer to get them over. Okay, it was it was crazy. Um, okay, how would you define? We'll start with you, Efat. How would you define the difference between traditional and digital marketing, in your view? Look, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't think there is traditional versus digital. I think today's traditional is kind of digital. So I would take what traditional used to mean 10 or 15 years ago, which had very little digital in it, and I'll take today's reality, which still has a lot of traditional things like you probably uh, refer to, but they have a much larger digital aspect. So in my opinion, we don't need to look at, okay, there was once digital, there was once traditional and today there's digital. We need to look at what are the marketing tactics that are bringing me my best results. Doesn't matter if they involve face-to-face -face or virtual or physical or whatever. And how can I adapt them to today's reality? So I think that's where the secret lies. Don't just go and get rid of the stuff you used to do because it's old-fashioned or because it's traditional. But think about how you can do it better today because you have digital. Right? Sorry. Um, you ruined the panel. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined the panel. panel fine. I, I agree to a certain extent. I think that we, have, we as marketeers, we have a toolbox, and that toolbox keeps on changing. Uh, we use, and if I look at, let's say, beginning of the year, you finish your budget meetings with your head of the company, whatever it is, you get such and such dollars to invest throughout the year, and you agree on the targets. Now, once that's done, you're on your own, essentially, as a marketeer. 
teams, you have many people, that's fine, but the marketing organization is now left to figure out how does it get to these types of you know, KPIs, goals, whatever it is. And I think that you look, you look at the, your toolbox and figure out what goes where. So essentially what happens is, let's say, you have, just, as, just as an example, if up till now you we've invested, let's say, in events, um, let's call it brick and mortar marketing, we see two things happening. One, there's now an additional channel which gains a lot more traction, which is the digital channel by itself. But even the traditional elements are getting a digital spin. So it's not just that we went from purely brick and mortar to fully digital. Digital is just another addition, and for some cases it's the best way, for some it's just a nice addition. But everything else we do still has to be with a digital flavor to it. Hi. So um, from my experience, um, I can tell that in the past two or three years when I've uh, joined Click Software, it's a B2B organization as you all uh, figured out by now. We had a transition from the, what we call traditional marketing to digital marketing, but in the sense that we do more and more campaigns online that we like a few years ago in 2010, 2009, we have invested lots of money on uh, events, posters, uh, ads, uh, you know, flyers and all these kinds of like, you know, you send something to someone via snail mail. Uh, today, everything goes digital. Like there is no option to do it differently than launch an online campaign. So we are in a social era and even, you know, on the social era, the sales people and you know the salespeople are very different than the marketing people uh, they don't believe in the leads coming in from uh, online campaigns right essentially most of them will say sorry yeah exactly <laughs> yeah maybe they they would yeah they would prefer meeting uh, potential prospects face to face. So it's not that we're not going to do events. It's not that we're not, that we will stop, you know, putting our marketing dollars on attending these events, but we will choose, okay? We will not participate in any event existing, uh, you know, in the industry or in the industry that we can find new prospects in. But what we'll do, we'll hook them via digital and we will start the communication with them and nurture them uh, while you know uh, while we do all kinds of other stuff but we need the face-to-face -face meeting so it's a combination of um, getting the leads from the online activities the digital activities and the face-to-face -face meetings with people like we do today um, we definitely need that, even though everything goes, you know, on social. But people do need the personal connection. So from my experience, if I sum it all up, we invest more and more money on digital, on online campaigns. We will, we will invest in events and face-to-face uh, -face events, like small meetings, for, small gatherings with uh, potential prospects. It's a mix. But it's leaning towards, uh, I would say, 60, 40 percent, 60 towards the digital, 40 towards the, let's call it traditional, whereas in uh, five years ago, it was the other way around. So that's where I see the mix. Yes. Wow. Okay. So you've ruined my first question completely. Uh, by saying that basically we're all friends and let's go hubby chubby and stuff like that. Uh, but it's okay because there's still a challenge uh, that we are uh, facing, right? At the end of the day, when you go to a marketer that is used to book, you know, put the, his or her budget on sponsorship of events and based on that build their lead forecast based on the events that they were last year and the year before and the year before, and then you come in with a box called marketing automation. You come in with another box called inbound marketing. And you come in with another box like what Bright Info provides, which is 
uh, uh, conversion optimization. And the end of the day, you come with another box called KPI, and this KPI is not exposure anymore. This KPI is actual leads that at the end of the process, if the company has a proper CRM in place, they're actually able to say, you know what, that campaign that you spend X amount of money on, that was their ROI. There is a, a shift in the way that both marketers and CEOs are looking at that function. So from your experience, what are the challenges that companies on a, on a strategic level are facing when they need to, to make this shift? I'm always starting with uh, with a thought because unlike my other uh, uh, the other members of the panelists of the panel, she actually prepared the, the answers beforehand. She has a cheat sheet, so I'm starting with her to give them uh, enough we time. We did. We just memorized them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just starting with her because she's supposed to be the ready, the most ready one. But we can start with uh, with Guy. You you okay? You had two poor words like lead gen. Okay. Budgeting and conceptual. Okay, so budgeting. <laughs> um, right. So in terms of budget, uh, if I'm asking for more budget for my lead generation via digital, then almost instantaneously today, I'm also being asked to show results because it's new, because it's much easier to uh, ask money for another exhibition, because the CEO has been to an exhibition and he knows that we do meetings at exhibitions and we have some leads from there, but he doesn't know how a lead looks like from the website or from the blog or what comes out of it. So when I ask for money, then I need to show results, whereas I don't think I need to show results when I do an exhibition today. So it's, it's the concept of asking for money for digital tools that would help me with lead generation that first I need to justify. So I think Aflat and I chatted about that earlier on. One of the things that I think we both started with is to do a lot of tests and trial and errors uh, in everything to do with lead generation and digital um, without asking for money just doing things manually and doing things as little pilots. Like I, I remember there was one, one exhibition that we went to in Russia where I decided I'm going to show them that I can generate leads through digital before this exhibition in Russia. And we'll come to Russia with having some meetings that were generated through digital. And I went on LinkedIn and I found some people and I did like a mini pilot and we went to that exhibition in Russia and we met some of those people. And I, I made sure to then communicate that internally so that they know what I did. Because if I wouldn't show them, um, I would probably not get the budget for my other LinkedIn stuff that I asked or my other lead generation uh, crazy ideas that I had. So I had to do a lot of small tests and trials and, you know, and, and test the waters and, and ask for not large amount of money, but small at the beginning, and then gradually increase them. <laughs> um, and it works. So budget is one, and a conceptual change to, to show your management, to show internally that you can actually generate business, or at least business opportunities through digital, and how you can do it, and really share the process, and share the tactics, and people are very impressed with that, but they also see that it's possible. I can share an experience that we had, with, at least with one of our clients, that were also doing their CMO services in a sense. Um, one thing that worked very, very well is to provide reports that the reports show exactly close to things that you're talking about. Which are, you know, here are all the people that we've, uh, last year that we've reached out to, and we've done it through email marketing, which was very basic with this specific client. And some of the people also left their details on the website, very basic, but the client was mainly focused on events. And then, Next year, the, the year later, we want to show them some of the more innovative stuff, marketing automation, doing some more smarter personalization, stuff like that. <clears throat> and the client didn't really believe in it. So what did work was to provide them, without saying anything, we just start to provide the, the dashboards that we provide, the reports that we provide, with a clear distinction between people that you've met in an event that were just through the email marketing you've done till today, and all the guys that we brought in in the cool way for the big guys. Okay, That worked very, very well because they were able to see this person came from that channel. That's point number one. 
Point number two, the fact that we're in digital has a lot of value because unlike other capabilities, other types of channels that we are working in, we have data. And I, I know it's recorded in video, but it's our video, so I decide later on if to cut it off or not. But um, data, when you show that you have data about each and every touch point with the customers, and you're saying, I've, you know, this is the amount of traffic that we got, and out of this traffic, this is the amount of people that were converted, and out of this, that, 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 that. And at the end, this is the amount of marketing qualified leads. Management is usually very, very impressed by the fact that you know this stuff. Because it's impossible to know that in any other channel. And it gives you some slack. Not a lot, but some slack because it provides the sense that you know what you're doing, that you are on top of the operation. And it's very, very important for management to feel that because they are actually trusting you to do those crazy stuff that they don't really understand in some cases and to succeed, but they're still going to pay for it. Sorry. Um, I wanted to add something. Um, take baby steps, small steps. What we did when we looked at the data of leads coming from events, we figured out that the information we have on these people is very little. We have their name, we have their um, position, we sometimes have their email, we could have their mobile phones and, you know, work phones, but when you call them, they will not answer. When you send them an email, they will not respond. They met you at an event, they gave you their card, in the, like, and to take that and turn it into a lead, okay, so now you met at an event, let's say you spent um, a huge sum of money to go to this event, because usually when you go on an event, it doesn't end with, at ten thousand dollars, it's always a hundred thousand dollars and more. So let's say you get a bunch of leads uh, from the event, and you go and check the leads, and you go and see what happened um, with these leads, and you'll find out that eighty percent of these leads are not even interested. So if we take it to a marketing language, um, it is translated at Click Software to say that the buying cycle or that the buying stage that these prospects are at is very preliminary. It's uh, at a very early stage. You meet someone at an event, uh, they come and shake your hands, they give you the card and from that to pursue them and make sure that they have the budget, make sure that they have the project, make sure that the solution they're looking for is a solution that you can provide, etc., etc. It takes lo lots of time. On the other hand, and I really liked your example from, you know, fishing potential people to meet at an event via digital, if it's LinkedIn, if it's never mind where. So at least you come to an event with um, the option of meeting the right people uh, at, uh, at the right, you know, timing on their buying cycle when they are more ready. What I say is that via digital, and there are lots of researches, and Gartner can support it, I guess, um, it's been known that over 60% of the people that visit uh, your site or meet with your sales reps have a knowledge about your company, what you do, and what your products do, and they do it online. So if you get them via a digital campaign, you kind of like, you know, get a more prime prospect. And when you start talking, talking, really, yeah, you know, talking, because sometimes the talking is uh, virtual. So when you start a communication with this type of lead, at least you know that they're interested in what you have to offer because they've made the research, because they read about you, because they filled in a form to download the latest Gartner report that shows that you're a leader or whatever. But uh, if you do, yes, exactly. So uh, to that say, uh, if you compare, uh, from digital you can get leads that may be more adequate or more ready uh, to hear more about what you have to offer. So this is my experience with events versus digital. I would like to offer a different perspective. I'm going to be a bit provocative here. 
because it's already a second question, so I can get to, I get to be provocative. <laughs> um, and I, I think I'll touch three aspects. I'll call it the um, bottom-up versus top-down approach of how you go into the mix of digital and traditional. Um, it's about also what is digital and the setting expectation of what is digital. And I think the third would probably be, uh, I'll leave the third for the end of the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but let's start with the first one. There are two options when you when you start this. You can do bottom up, which is exactly what I, I think uh, Afra basically said. You can figure out, you know, this is my budget, I'm going to need additional budget for this and that, I'll try to mix them and so on. And this would provide me the leads and I, I'll have to convince them why those are coming from digital, why is it worth it and so on. I usually like to, when, when I go into these discussions, in any company that I've worked with, I usually try to break that equation. I'm not interested in having the mi the mix of digital versus traditional, so to speak, discussed in those meetings. I'm trying to understand what is that program as a whole need to accomplish. Okay, what are the elements that we need to get to at the end of the year? Let me figure out then what mix I want to do when and where, and that becomes a top-down approach. Let's talk about what the strategy of the program is. Where do we want to go? What is that we need to do? Then I'll go back with my team of experts in Brainiacs and we'll figure out what's the best mix for that specific aspect at that specific place. And once we have that element, then yeah, it becomes basically an element then of budgeting and if we need an extra, we'll ask for an extra, we might get it, we might not, we'll do the priorities and so on. But the discussion becomes from a totally different place. We're not coming asking for things. We're coming in a more professional level as marketeers and asking, what is it you want to accomplish? And then we, we as the experts, will figure out what's the best way to accomplish for our company. That's the first one. Second one is digital. If you ask three different people what is digital to them, you'll get six six different answers because we're all Jewish. So you'll get six different answers, okay? Because digital is email marketing. That's digital, and we're done. We're done there. Digital is and get this straight because I heard it in one of my previous companies is posting a blog without any conversion. I'm just posting a blog somewhere. Ah, oh, we went digital. We're good. One blog a year, but one post a year. Sorry, but that was digital because he did something online. Okay, um, exactly. One and zero, exactly. Um, and it, but potentially for me, true digital is an integrated approach across all channels. It's the flavoring we talked about in the previous question and the traditional ones, and it's also hooking up the different elements. It's email marketing with the blog platform with conversions. It's moving that to the website. It's getting traffic all across the board. It's retweeting it and linking it and retargeting the person so where he goes, I can follow him and figuring it out. That's for me is a true digital marketing campaign. Now, don't, don't get these things might cost a bit, sometimes an arm and a leg. But if you look at these and you build it according again to what is the strategy, what do you want to achieve, you suddenly figure out that it becomes a very clear sort of mathematical equation type of question. Where do I want to go? What are my assets? What am I, what am I likely to get? Where does the audience that I want for that specific program, approach, activity, you name it, reside? Can I get them more on the traditional side, digital side, both? And then it's just a matter of mixing it all up. Okay, so, so so let's challenge it a bit. Uh, everyone here on stage are uh, in the complex sales kind of business, and I'm sorry I didn't send you I didn't send you the question beforehand, so your cheat sheet won't work now. Um, and you know when you were selling a product that you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get a lead, and then someone will call him, that's it. You can s you can show the value very very easily, but in the complex sales world, now it's gonna be tough. Because you have all those sales guys saying, ah, oh, I know this mobile operator from 1995. I had drinks with this guy from the network department back then. And now you tell me they opened an email? Or we know this market already. We know everybody there. So you really want to tell me that we saw this $10 billion deal because they attended the webinar, right? And that's in cases that you can actually link the two. You can link from a lead gen, which is done by marketing, to an actual sales, which is done by sales. And let's say for a second that we live in La La Land and they even talk with each other, sales and marketing, right? In this very, very uh, utopian uh, organization I'm talking about. How do you then go to your CEO and tell him, look, you remember all those events that you had, all those leads that were coming from there? Brackets, we know that they're not that high, that of good quality, but we know that we bought these leads and you had this Excel, this nice Excel that shows you all the people that we've met. We should not go there. We should not buy this $10,000 banner above our booth 
because with these ten thousand dollars, I can run a marketing program for almost two months, at least in some cases, right? How do you convince them then to make this cha- this change? Point number one. Point number two. How do you get your team to believe that? Because if you're bringing a team which is homegrown, which is from within the organization, they're from the school of saying, I am, you know, we are traditional marketers. We know how to do X, Y, Z. And now you need to help them to go to the next step. How do you solve this problem? From your personal experience, of course. No cheat sheet. So how do I solve it with the management? How do I solve it with my team? It's easy. I, I've never, I've never, <laughs> seriously, I, I don't think I've had the problem. I came and said, I don't want to spend that 10K on another sponsorship in an exhibition. I want to take it and put it on LinkedIn campaigns. And my boss said, go for it. So I, sir, I, he knows, he knows the value. He's there as well. Who's not there? there If your boss is not in digital, then and he's in charge of marketing in some way, then you gotta have a conversation with him. You gotta start by educating your boss, I guess. How many many people here, okay, have feel that this is a challenge? Let's not go into specifics. I'm sorry, maybe. I think that what happened is that maybe in the past two or three years... Can you just first of all uh, present yourself? My name is Owen Balkai. I used to work as a product manager. Okay. Um, and I think that what happened over the past two or three years is that even the CEO was looking at the event and saying, okay, what's the ROI on the event? How much lead gen actually in volume, in volume dollars, not in amount, comes out of it? Show me, show me the numbers the same way you do ROI on digital. Once that happens, you can shift it very easily because you say, this is a bit higher ROI but you need a mix of it. And as she said, once, he's, once your management is on board, it's easy. Yeah, but I've never proved the ROI on a 10K budget for LinkedIn campaign. He wants me to tr- try it. He's willing to give me the money to try. That's, that's so 10% of the I, budget. I, I proved that I know digital. I think that was impressive enough to let me play in that playground of, of digital. So... As I said, I can increase the sums. Sorry? How big in terms of employees? 350 people? You want me to impress you? It's an orange subsidiary. No, I was just curious. <laughs> I was just curious okay. about that. Uh, it's not, it's, I don't have such a big marketing budget. CEO or your boss or. Yeah, how much my boss money is. How much can you spend without fucking care? Without? How much money can you spend without fucking care? Only 2K. Above 2K, I have to get someone to sign it. Not very generous. But they normally sign it, even if they ask questions. I answer, and they sign, and I try. And if I fail, I don't do it again, or I do it differently. But at least they trust me enough to try things. you got to get their trust. I don't know. It's down to communication and relationships. Okay, so for, for the less uh, less fortunate companies... How do you solve it? You had a question? The question is, how do you, it's one thing you prove ROI based on some history. How do you go about doing that without antagonizing the non-digital marketers? That's how, the, the question was, the, yeah, so you have, so uh, the question was about uh, how do you do not antagonize the, the traditional marketers when you're bringing all those cool, shiny things. Yeah. Well, I, I think I'm a good example for that because I'm in charge of all marketing in the company. So both traditional and non-traditional marketing is in my team. I have about seven people, not many, but um, they just know that we have a goal. We have a, a shared goal and a vision, and whoever brings the leads, that's great. So... It's just a matter of communicating right with your team and setting the expectations to what we're trying to achieve. I think it goes back to what Guy was saying about uh, what's the strategy, what's the mission, and then we go from there. So, you know, if someone has a problem, really, it's just a matter of ego or, you know, just trying to really build a relationship so that you can talk to them openly. I don't think it has anything to do with marketing. (laughs) It's good management, I guess. I don't know. 
You should have given me the microphone. I saw that. <laughs> Why didn't you take that Why one? Why did you take that one? Whoa. Um, two aspects. There's a management issue here, which is nothing to do with marketing, just management skills. And then there's marketing skills. Um, I'll start with the management one. A, you need to manage the situation. Uh, for example, by the way, I can I can take your your question and if I may extrapolate upon it, because it's not just you know the non-digital ones uh, versus the digital ones, but what happens if you're in-house and I had it in several companies? Your in-house um, digital com digital team has a very specific set of talents. But what you need is that extra that you can't get from them. Right. So you get the digital in-house and the digital which you outsource somewhere. So you still get the same sort of potentially ego, um, antagonism and so on. So I, I guess across the board, um, it, there's a management technique. Basically what you do is you, you lay out the, the playing field. This is what, this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. Um, and, from my experience, what happens is that you create this by a believing in it. If if you truly, by the way, if you don't believe it, you won't be able to to um, harness other people to actually go with you and get them on board. Um, but if you do, what happens is by by doing it, you create a sense of urgency and a sense of accomplishment, and then basically everybody gets in it together. And this is why I like to talk to to start these discussions, especially with my teams, from the strategy level. What is it we want to accomplish? Then we'll figure out that you know the rest becomes logistics all of a sudden. Because everybody's united under one idea. That's on the management side. On the marketing side, and that goes to Kfir's, I think, initial question, what happens when the sales cycle is long? Long could be more than 12, 14, 16 months sometimes. Um, I don't know if you know, but in the telecom industry, if you want to sell a huge system, it's roughly around long, longer than 12 months easily. So how can you connect that, you know, lead or whatever, the, whatever activity you've done 12, 30 months be, be before to something that just happened now? There's no visible connection. Um, Couple of techniques. One, it doesn't necessarily have to be a lead at the end. And I'll explain. In some cases, you have the decision maker or the buying center, let's put it that way, and you have a ton of influencers around them. Even if your sales guy knows someone who he's been drinking with for Kingdoms Come, whatever, um, he still knows one, two, three, four people. At the end of the day, it's one to few type of approach. You come in with digital, suddenly you can flash out tons and tons of people Again, depends on how big your playfinger is to start with. But you can actually then flash out a lot of people that he doesn't even know about. And they can be potential influencers today, and they'll be the decision makers of tomorrow. But you bring in value through, I call it, a an additional channel of way to, to get to get things done. It also evolved, by the way, in most in most industries, by the way, not just telecom, um, the buying centers keep on evolving. So if you used to sell to the IT, suddenly you have to sell to the IT and the network or the IT and the marketing. And then your sales guy is kind of helpless because he knows the guys in IT very well, he takes them out for drinks, but he has no idea who the marketing guys are and potentially they don't know who he is either, so why would they even talk to him? This is where digital come, becomes really valuable. So you can meet them through events and so on, but if you engage with them on a long process and then you actually hand it out to him and say, guys, this, this guy is in marketing, he's interested in X, Y, Z, he's already, he's already requesting a follow-up, just go and tie them out. It makes a hell of a, a hell of a difference, pardon my French, um, between going and saying, hey, we're going to go digital and replace the banner versus I'll do digital marketing versus you bring in value. And by the way, I, I do want to, I do want to, I would argue that sales and marketing talk very well together, uh, provided, and that's a big provided, uh, that marketing brings sales value. Okay. If we, if mar if marketeers can actually come and say here, this is the marketing, you know, marketing has two aspects in the way sales guys think. A, they make shiny presentations, great. Um, B, um, they do a lot of stuff that really has no consequence on what I have to sell tomorrow morning. If we can break that cycle and come, and digital is a great way to break that cycle, come in and say, look, we've run this campaign, here are three different personas, three different people you want to meet in that organization because they've expressed in one, two, three, and just happens that two of them he doesn't even know about, that's value. And if you follow up with him and, and you go and you, and you sort of go the whole, the full nine, the whole nine yards and you go to the meeting with them and you present there as well and you, and you close it, that's true value. I, I call it marketing support. Sales support we have, well, maybe, you know, in, in, in larger companies, it's, it's sort of divided. But yeah, I, I feel that we go from digital to traditional to closing the loop to going back. And that's a true marketeer in my, in my, my perspective. 
I totally agree with what you said. <laughs> what you said. <laughs> 100% right. Um, the day-to-day -day challenge, I think, that every marketer faces in every org almost every organization is how you deal with um, the people that used to do it in a certain way and now you want to bring a new approach i think it applies to every job every position you have in ev almost every company so a tip i don't know if it's a tip or not but quick wins uh find a way to tie the knots and uh as my friend here said Instead of uh, run a single campaign, build, you know, build your plan. And build your plan according to what you would like to achieve. And from that, go downwards and choose your channels. And make sure that the channels, like, um, have a very good correlation in between. So, and what is the process that you would like the prospect to go through? What kind of information would you like them to get on your solution, on your product, whatever it may be? So when you tie all the dots together and you come with a reasonable campaign that makes sense, I think that reasonable people want to see your thinking process. So if that could be a quick win to show them a process um, that makes sense, it could be a good key, but really it's uh, in every position, in every situation, in every job you may have. Um, so that would be my personal tip uh, for you as a quick win. But I, I think that another approach is to, is to take a methodological approach to, it, to show that uh, the reality is that our customers behave differently now than they did 10 years ago. Because 10 years ago, they didn't search Google, and now they do. So if I want to define a business process of customer acquisition, I have to, I have to uh, uh, consider that today, part of their the customer acquisition process is Google search. And if I don't address that particular point, then I'm going to miss, miss out on that particular customer acquisition. And, and uh, if I can methodologically show that this is how I acquire customers, and it can happen this way for this persona, and this way for that persona, and these are the stations along the way, along this process, then let's now address each one of these junctions. And, and if you do that, then there's almost no, if you're a logical person, you have to agree that we have to address all these different junctions. I got a couple of tips too. One is for exhibitions. So you were talking about bringing value, especially to sales. One of the things we started doing in the past year is before exhibitions, we're the ones that are in charge of setting up the meetings for the salespeople at the exhibitions. So we do that. We make sure that the meetings are going to be interesting and welcomed by the salespeople because in many cases they don't like the meetings we give them. So we, we've learned and now we make sure before the exhibition that they're happy with what we set up. What we do is we print out a paper sheet and we put on that sheet a picture of the guy or the girl they're going to meet, all of the details we have about them and a lot of information from digital that they cannot get on the day. Yeah, I do a lot of cheat sheets um, <laughs> on the day of the event. So they, when they come to the exhibition and they, they have a meeting, we hand out that, that paper to them. And then they have lots of information about the organization, about the department, about the people. But what is really cool and that is from digital is that we go to LinkedIn, for example, and we map out all of the connection that that person has with people from our company or our partners so that the person who is meeting that guy knows to name drop someone or to say, I know you've been working with this one or that one, he's my friend, or, you know, tips that can help them, you know, gain more business intelligence that they couldn't get on the spot or that they wouldn't bother to do before, before an exhibition. So that's one thing we do and they love it. They love those sheets. So speaking of giving value, and then I had another one. <laughs> no, it was, uh, if that reminded me something, but I forgot. Um, okay, okay, I'll, I'll remember later. I'll rem <laughs> um, okay, so 
we will need to wrap up soon because it started a bit late. But um, let's talk about two more things. One, which is, it sounds like it's not that interesting, but it is, in many cases, recipe for success. Okay, let's talk a bit about the technologies behind the scenes. Okay, one of the things that we see that are a huge challenge is actually being able to track, first of all, to track the the process that the lead goes through, uh, to connect all the dots, to connect them to the CRM. Okay, to make sure that we are actually able to attribute revenues to uh, to a meaningful marketing uh, activity. Okay. Um, what are the things that, from your experience, that you've seen that work pretty well? What are the things that are completely doesn't worth the effort or money? In digital in general. Well, we've um, implemented a marketing automation system about a year ago, HubSpot, and it's been a kind of a painful first three to five months. Um, but we have done it all on our own, and we had great help from, from the company, from HubSpot. And today, we do so much with it that we can't believe how we, we manage to do stuff without. So we have great insights into um, the buyer's journey on an individual level. So, and I use that a lot. When I get someone visiting my website or downloading something or or just reading one of my posts, I like to, as a habit, just have that pop up and I, I straight away go to that person's profile to see who they are. And I like to freak them out and then I you know, ask them to connect on LinkedIn or Twitter all in real time. I just like to know, really try to feel my, the people that are visiting me and what are they looking at, what are they looking for, and learn not as a robot, but as a human being that is trying to track in real time what people are doing. So I do that a lot with HubSpot. I use um, Hubs uh, I use WordPress for blogging. I'm considering moving that to HubSpot as well because it's so convenient to have one system to do everything. So I use HubSpot also for social. All of my distribution of content is through HubSpot. Um, I use, obviously, email marketing, workflows, automation rules. Um, today, I know that if certain people are visiting my website or blog and they're from certain companies, I'll mark them uh, as competitors straight away because I know which companies they're coming from. So I do a lot of things automatically, and it really helps me with segmentation. So now I can do a lot more effective um, campaigns to my database without purchasing anything or, or spending money on leads or on clicks or anything like that using my own information. So I became, you know, I did spend a lot of money on that system and I'm continuing to spend that um, yearly. But it saves me money on the long run because I need to do less advertising and less targeting outside and I can do more segmentation and targeting inside my database, which is growing quite fast um, so that to me marketing automation is the big uh, change yeah in the in the past year um, blogging and social is uh, definitely a great tool but it's it's easy to say as a as a buzzword and as a technique it, what's more important is the content behind it so you got to build a good content strategy before you start writing before you open your WordPress or your you know, your Twitter channel, you really got to think about what you want to achieve with your content and what kind of content you want to write, what is your style, what is your tone, all that kind of stuff. So, and, and it's really important to stop there and do it properly. We'll just share some of the stuff that we're doing also in-house because we have also a complex sale. We're not selling to mobile operators, but believe me, to get uh, a company to invest in building a sales and marketing machine like the one we're offering, it is it is a process we have to go through. The marketing person that pushes it out to the purchasing to, in many cases, the CEO. Um, and we try also to model our work as a model for our clients because the first thing our clients ask us is, okay, so are you doing that? Are you just trying to sell something because it's good to sell as a, as a marketing company or are you actually eating your own dog food? Um, what we're doing, first of all, we're still amazed to see, but there are companies, newsflash, that do not have a CRM. Okay, um, that's a key for everything. You know, even before we go to, when we talk with clients, we, we also have a, a marketing automation uh, consultancy in, in within our client, in, within our company. But when we go to a client, we first of all ask them, do you have a CRM? If they don't have a CRM, we say, don't pay us. First of all, buy a CRM, implement the relevant processes, 
in the CRM for, for you to have the baseline. Without it, you could just you just can't work. Um, we're using also marketing automation. Marketing automation is transformative. In our view, it's a transformative technology. It's not just like buying uh, the guys from Octopus were here. They enable you to track leads from social. That's awesome. This is Daniel, the CEO of Octopus. Um, so Octopus is a very important tool in the mix to tr be able to track um, leads from social. We have, uh, of course, the buy you paid for the guys who paid for your beer, the guys who provide info that actually enable us to squeeze every drop of leads from all the incoming traffic. But if there is one technology that is transformative in the way that you market, is marketing automation. Uh, we're working with a company called Acton Software um, internally. I mean, this is the tool that we're using. And I can tell you that it completely changed the way that we look at marketing today. We're able to really understand the buyer journey, which is the number one source of data to be able to create the best content out there, to hit on the right lead on the right time, and it enables us, even though we're relatively a small company, to be able to process many leads in the right way, in the right time, in the right place. The fact that you are here is thanks to marketing automation, because thanks to marketing automation, we're able to manage to invite you in, to manage the registration, to be able to see what you're interested in. And that's a real transformative technology that I think that one of the things happening with marketing automation today in the market, too many companies looking at it as a general infrastructure. Uh, while the tools that are in there, the, the abilities, what you can do with them is, is, is huge. Uh, of course, we, you know, we use different top platforms for blogging. And as we said, we're using Octopus for distribution. We're using Bright Info for, uh, um, uh, for conversion optimization. Uh, the secret for us was until today, and we see it as a challenge in many, uh, in many uh, of our clients, is to actually do the end-to-end -end tracking of leads. Meaning to be able to say this lead came from that specific marketing activity and they were nurtured by these specific marketing activities and some of them were not a push, some of them were a pull. For example, this person read a blog post. They didn't open an email, which is something I can easily track. They didn't download a white paper, which is something I can easily track. They just read a blog post. For us, reading a blog post is a huge sign because if they read a blog post, which is very bottom of the funnel, consideration of marketing automation tools, I need to give them a call because I have a good offer for them, right? Um, and this ability to do this, to analyze these implicit behaviors um, is something that is not trivial. It requires a different way of thinking. Um, the way that we see it, it's it going back to the basics of marketing, really understanding the way that your customers think. And then based on that, understand how they search and how they read your content and why they read your content and why they read the specific types of content that they've read. Um, so the tracking and the ability to say, this is what, this is how I generated those leads. This is how I managed to get them to, we didn't get them. This is how we managed to know that they are actually in a relevant phase in their life cycle that I should call them and I should spend the time on a coffee. Um, that was a huge change. And of course, connecting everything to the sell to Salesforce that at the end of the day, Salesforce, by the way, as you all know, how many people here use Salesforce? Horrible system, but it is the only game in, time, in town. So managing that within Salesforce, that with a click, we can see what is the value of each marketing activity. I think when we manage to do that, other things change in the way that we look at our own marketing. And we started just to offer the same thing for our clients and some of them bought it. And it was it was interesting to see how they how they actually being able to use these tools you know, to, to work uh, to work with it. Now, if you're thinking about marketing automation, buy whatever, you know, uh, you can buy Marketo, I mean, my condolences, but you can buy Marketo, you can buy HubSpot, that has its own plus and minuses, you can buy Acton, it has plus and minuses, Pardot has plus and minuses, but if there is one technology that you need to implement ASAP in order to make sure that you are in the game, is marketing automation, at least in my opinion. Um, I agree, but <laughs> there's always a but with me. Um, I, no, I think technology is is the right way to go. I usually don't like to put all my eggs in one basket, so to speak, so I try to mix and match. I'm not saying I have three marketing automation systems. I have one, but I'm, I'm trying to spread it across the different digital channels. So marketing automation is one, and conversion optimization on the blogs and on the website is two. Uh, and using all the social channels, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on, and then hopefully get stuff retweeted and so on, that's great. But two things that I usually, I found out throughout several years already of, of doing these. A, these things are not silos. 
they have to be connected. I'll say it again. They have to be connected. Because usually what happens is I get my marketing automation up and the marketing automation guys are extremely happy because the system is up and running and they don't really care what's happening on the blog platform. Because it's theirs. Marketo's working or whatever. Alakua, Marketo, Acton, you name it. They're fine with it. Blog guys come up and, and run their blog platform running on WordPress or whatever. Get all those fancy plugins in. And then they, they couldn't give a hoot about what's happening in Marketo and so on and so forth. Um, so... Essentially, what you need to do as a marketeer is you need to basically tie the dots between them and make sure it's one channel or one basically um, thread that goes throughout these all these digital channels and you're the one who's managing them, not they manage you. That's one. Second one is content. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure on this one I'm preaching to the choir, but uh, hard sell type of content doesn't work on digital channels. Don't push your product. I can't, I can't probably say it enough. Don't ever push your product. Go on thought leadership items. Talk about curation, what's happening in the industry. Give your own insight. Build, first of all, the credentials that you're someone who's not there to sell them something. And then they'll, you know, if you build it, they will come, so to speak. Um, and once you're, once they're, every now and again, it's very subtly, in the subtle way, drop in something about your product. Once in a while, by the way, guys, we're going to be at this event exposing that type of project, launch, launching this type of solution, whatever. Don't talk about your solution or product as a given all day. It's boring, and they wouldn't care for it. That's it. Again, I totally agree. <laughs> so tying up all the dots uh, is really essential. Um, I would also like to take it to the content management system. My friends here touched upon content. Content is king, and uh, website is its kingdom, I would say. So a good content management system, a good content management system can give you a very in-depth insight on what's going on on your website. Um, I come from a company from Q Click Software. We truly believe in content. We generate tons of content and uh, we have lots of people contributing to generating content. And with content creation comes the question, how do you, how do you actually measure? So you have a campaign, the campaign is built out of blocks and the blocks are content. Every specific content has its own route and how do you link all that and how do you tie all that up together? So you talked about Acton and you talk, and if you talk about the future of content management system and marketing automation, my vision is that these two worlds will have to kind of like combine. Um, someday, uh, the content management system that um, we as a company implemented about a year ago, it was a huge project. So after we proved the company that digital actually works, uh, we got a budget of um, a nice sum to change the, I call it the, the hard content management system that... Come on. No, I come from Microsoft and I hate SharePoint. You can go ahead and tell that I said it. Um, but no, it wasn't SharePoint. It, I know it's on video. I don't mind. But really, it wasn't SharePoint. It was something really awful, but never mind. Um, so EpiServer, for example, yeah, I, I don't know who bought who. It's uh, Epi that bought Acton or Acton that bought Epi, but... Acton bought Epi, so we are established on Epi for the content management system and Marketo, WordPress for the blog, and um, really, this is a struggle, like, to tie it all together. I didn't find uh, a proper solution uh, that ties the blog and the social into Marketo. They speak about social plugins. Um, it's not working so well. You can quote me. We're struggling with that, really, truly. It's it's a pain. It's a pain. It's a pain. No, if there's someone representing Marketo, please tell these guys. We need some assistance here. So uh, the minute that w they will solve it, I think that we will be very happy. So tie it all together. Uh, make sure that you can understand what your content is doing if you're investing in the right place. If the content you're generating actually provides value. Value, and we talked a lot about leads, but 
what about what the prospects actually need? What kind of content really interests them? How would you know if you don't track it down? How do you know if uh, you don't have, uh, let's say you don't have a content management system, you must have Google Analytics codes running across your site, so you'll have uh, like a view on what's going on. Um, sorry? Of course. <laughs> someone needs to look at the reports. Like, someone needs to know how to work around the Google Analytics, and uh, you, you need to have someone. Um, or ask me, or, you know, really. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the bread and butter of, uh, you know, people who work with digital. It's not that we sit at the office and think strategy all day. Uh, we actually, yes, put our hands into the data and crunch the data and, you know, understand what the data means. Um, good luck. <laughs> if you find a, a solution for, uh, you know, all the stuff that happens on your blog with Marketo, please let me know. <laughs> I'll be the first to uh, kind of like, you know, jump and yay, it's happening. Um, but 90% can be tied up together. Um, think about content management system. Before you think about marketing automation, I think that uh, you 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 kind of like need to have the basic, um, but have them all. <laughs> the more, the merrier. Um, we love data. We must love data. Marketing people, it's not just about innovations and crazy campaigns and you know a beautiful graphics. Uh, it's about the data and what's working and what's not and the intelligence behind it. I think. Um. Um. Okay. First of all, regarding connecting social with Marketo. These guys can help you. The guys from Octopost. 10%. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm just like, look, they, they like 200,000 a month. Um, okay. So, uh, first of all, are there any questions from the audience, specific things you would like us to take a bit, uh, deeper or something like that? Yes. Um, I'm interested to know in your overall marketing budgets have grown significantly in the last couple of years. Um, because that's something we always see that the really startups especially are not spending enough money on marketing. I know you guys are bigger companies, but have you seen a significant growth in your budget? I will just re repeat the question for everyone that uh, Nancy from, from Gartner was asking, uh, have you seen a growth in marketing budgets in the last couple of years uh, compared to, uh, to startups, basically? No, for me, no. It's been the same and decreasing a little bit, and the only change was the mix, is how I reshuffle my budget. And I have a lot less events today and a lot more other stuff. I won't say digital, but digital with other, other things. Yeah, to just reshuffle it, yeah. And what I also chose to do is merge money in events into one big event instead of few small ones. I wanted to put a lot of money on one thing and do it well rather than spreading it thin. Our budget hasn't grown, but no, it, overall it hasn't grown, but the mix, if you talk about the mix and how the, you know, how you chop the pie, that has been changed, I can tell you. Um, and if we speak about Investing a lot of money in big events. Yes, we will go to Salesforce. We will go to SAP events. Like, you know, we will. Um, however, you'll find more and more budget going towards other initiatives. Um, you know, moving to cloud, you have to go digital. Um, SMB, the transition from the upper level enterprise towards selling more to the SMB has changed the face of marketing budget. So this is, this is the change that uh, we are experiencing. Um, 
We also inv invested, like, from a product perspective, we invested a lot of money on building apps, business apps. We moved towards SaaS and apps. So we definitely invest more in, um, in digital, but uh, the budget, the, the general budget hasn't increased. Goals did increase, of course. So from a year to year, yeah, I'm like, yeah, just finished uh, a, a very hard negotiation process for next year, but um, the goals are going higher and higher. The survey of CEOs worldwide globally, of what was their top tech, technology enabled investment, digital marketing was number one. Over e-commerce, over customer uh, experience, over just, life. Just, just for, for the people that will see this, on demand. So again, there was a survey of CEOs of top worldwide, worldwide yeah. that they've invested more this year. They were asked you know, over the next five years, over their number one investment uh, priority. Investment oh, okay, for cool. Te technology enabled, digital marketing is number one. So digital marketing is the number one technology enabled field that CEOs worldwide will invest in the next five years. I'm in the wrong business. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm partially in the right one. I'm you're, partially in the right one. You're I don't have zone. a product, but I'm in the zone. So they will invest in technologies and they will explain what to do with it. Uh, sounds good. I can, I can live with that. Um, okay. So, <laughs> um, that was the whole panel. Yeah. Do, uh, of course. Um, did I mention that I know her for many years? Um, so for the last question for the panelists, um, what I really want you to share with the people here, some of the people here tomorrow morning need to face um, a less, uh, let's call it a more hostile organization to their digital marketing ideas and craziness. So I would like to ask you guys for one, um, one tip that you can give to the people here and the people who will see it uh, afterwards on demand. Um, what should they do tomorrow morning to help their companies to go through this digital transformation process that we, uh, that we said? that we've basically discussed here in, in, in length. One tip that they can do on their own, does not require a lot of budget, does not require to change, you know, world uh, to create a new world order in their marketing organization or in the mind of the CEO. What can they do to help their company to transform? I'll we'll start with you. Surprise. No, I don't have <laughs> Mine would be, don't forget to get creative. In your next... I don't know, exhibition or your next uh, big activity you're rolling out, think of a, an interesting punch that you can bring into that activity, whether it's physical or digital. So a good example is this. So for my last exhibition in September, I decided that my theme for the exhibition is going to be proven and deployed. And my whole booth at the exhibition was my customers' um, systems that we've built for them. So it was only their products, and the whole concept of the booth was around proven and deployed digitally, mostly in the months before the event. So we created a stamp digitally, and we ran it through videos and through banners, and and on the website, of course, and it was a theme that was uh, with us for a few months. And then at the event itself, we created these stamps. And we brought four different colors of ink, and we took one of the beautiful white walls of the booth, and we asked all of those people who were wearing those nice jackets and look very sophisticated to take a stamp and start stamping the wall and do graffiti all over the, the booth. And they loved it, and they wanted the photographer to take photos of them doing the stamp. and. People just like to have fun, so don't forget the fun stuff and the creative stuff that you can bring into your normal marketing activities. Um, my tip would be, you know, okay. So the first thing I did when I joined Click, um, and I was the first person uh, hired to kind of like create a digital marketing for Click. So the first hire was creative content manager. And a creative content manager, the responsibilities are two. One, 
is videos. I'm a, I'm a believer of video. And the second is content, but small pieces of content. I'm not talking about these huge 10 pages, 15 pages of uh, business paper. No, so creative content, content manager was my first hire to the team. Why? Because people are looking for tangible um, examples. Uh, they don't want you to talk about product, always, you know, sell, 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 sell. They want to see what value. And this is a transformation from talking marketing and uh, marketing blah, 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 all these big words, innovative, downer. Um, give them short examples. Um, you now have five to seven seconds to attract someone's attention online, and that's it. If you, ha if you have, haven't succeeded to attract them within the five, seven, I don't know, 10 seconds, and I would be like very generous, they will go away and um, it's, it's, um, it's sad because it's co it costs money. You talked about budgets and it costs money. So this investment uh, was proven to be a very good investment. And I'm speaking after uh, three years of experience uh, having a creative content person on the team. On a yearly basis, we create in between 20 to 25 videos, customer uh, videos. Uh, we have been able to get more and more referenceable customers over time uh, because um, people want to share their opinions. People want to share their successes. People want to talk. People actually want to talk. If people didn't want to talk, WhatsApp, yes, spam, WhatsApp, Facebook, LinkedIn would have never worked. They want uh, the stage to share their opinions and uh, we found that it's working beautifully. Um, on landing pages, PPC landing pages, if you have a short video, um, that will be a very good eye catcher uh, and a very good uh, lead converter. So this would be my tip to you. Um, think about amplification of content. Think about short bites of content. Think about videos. Um, and all these uh, nice pieces that you can share. Don't sell. Share your thoughts and uh, values. And that's my tip to you. Okay. Um. Since I'm the last one, can I get two tips? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the first one, you know, I'm a great fan. Um, I'm a great fan of Nike. Just do it. You, you're, I, and you know, um, digital marketing is a journey. Uh, you got to start somewhere. And you're going to start, if you haven't done it before or your company isn't really into a digital DNA, let's be very clear. You're going to hit obstacles. You're going to hit obstacles of people not knowing what you want to do. There's uncertainty. Sometimes there's misconceptions. Sometimes it's just plain ego, you know, job security. You got tons and tons of things. But before you take the first step, you got to honestly, and this is a bit of, you know, my wife's a coach, or so I'm going to borrow one of hers. But you got to take a really long and hard look into yourself and figure out, are you up for this journey? Because it's a journey. And it, some of it will be great. You'll have the best route of your life. And some of it will be just a bit frustrating because you're going to hit walls. But if you truly believe that this is the right way, you'll win everyone over. And especially in Israel, we're, you know, we're the ultimate copycats. Someone opens a falafel stand and makes, you know, it's great. The next morning, someone else opens it right opposite him. So the minute something works, everybody's want to, will be, will want to be over on, on that train. Um, so that's one. So just to sum that one, just do it. Go on, figure out, do a quick win as we've talked about for, in this panel, but go and just do it and, and be ready for, for the fact you're going to hit walls. The two is content. Um, Try to keep content consistency. I'll explain what I mean. Try to create a con, even if you do just something minor at the beginning, just to test the water. Create something which is a hook. Let's say um, an ebook. 
Take that ebook, then slice and dice it into blogs. Then those blogs publish now with a conversion optimization amount. Figure out how you take one element and repurpose it as much as you can across different channels. A, it's going to save you time. B, you're going to keep content. That says if someone reads a blog or a post or a post about something you've done and it connects to a larger element, it's easier for him to go and figure out what he wants to download. Don't go all over the place in what I call random acts of marketing in the, in the area. Be very focused. And when you get to that content phase, you'll figure it out fairly easy what needs to be done. Try to create as much content as you can before your campaign goes up. Once it's up, it's all about measuring stuff. It's all about figuring out what needs to be tweaked and so on. You don't have a lot of time if you're pressured for time. Sorry, you don't have a lot of creativity if you're pressured for time to get those blogs up and running, those posts up and running every time. Try to create that type of, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 posts at a time and figure out your cadence. How, how far, what, what's your sort of upload strategy? Is it once a day, once a week, whatever? And figure out how much you need upfront. So it'll give you a peace of mind to write the next set while everything's keep running in the, in the meantime. It's very important. Thank you. Okay, I would like to uh, thank the panelists that spent the time in sharing their uh, knowledge. I'd like to thank Bright Info that spent the time and got us all drunk. Uh, I would like to thank you guys that even though there was this horrible storm and trees were falling and everything, uh, you came to, to be a part of it. Um, B2B Talks is basically everywhere. You have a LinkedIn group, you have a website. If you search for B2B Talks on Google, there's even a Flipboard magazine. So if you search for B2B Talks with a hashtag, you'll see content from the event, but also a lot of uh, curated content that we just uploading all the time. And we'll hopefully we'll meet all of you again. We're, our next event is at the end of February. We'll send you all an email with the details as soon as the topic will be finalized. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you all.